starts right now. We begin tonight with a, live, a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County. 137 people tested positive today. That plus an extra 205 backlog cases belonging to Bear County, as reported by Walgreens. That brings us to a total now of 45,156 positive cases since March. There are 14 new deaths also announced that raises our death toll to 712. 482 remain hospitalized locally with 213 people in the ICU and 144 still on ventilators. A reported suspicious vehicle, a car crashing into a home and a single shot being fired. A tense chain of events that landed an armed man in police custody this afternoon. That bullet narrowly missed that SAPD officers making that arrest. And the night team's Jaffney Gray explains what investigators are now trying to figure out. As you can imagine a very tense situation where an officer is trying to take somebody into custody and they just hear a gunshot. To say the least, nerves were on edge for officers this afternoon after trying to apprehend this suspect. Initially, they got a call of a suspicious vehicle in the area fitting the description of this great Jeep you see here. Before the officers were able to even make contact with that suspicious vehicle, which a description was provided, they took off from the officers. Officer Doug Green with SAPD says for some unknown reason, the passenger got out and ran off while the driver sped off, losing officers until they got a call saying the same Jeep had crashed into a home. The driver found in a nearby church parking lot. When the officers attempted to approach that suspect, they were reaching into their pockets. Commands were given to that individual to uh, take their hands out of their pockets and that's when a gunshot went off. That gunshot now being investigated. We're not sure if this weapon was intentionally was to be shot towards the officers of this or this was an accidental discharge. Fortunately, officers did not return fire and the suspect's gun was recovered. Green says the only damage done was a hole being shot out of the suspect's pocket, but he says it could have been a lot worse. This had all the elements of being very dangerous situation. Uh, we could have lost officers, that suspect could have lost his life today. And so we're thankful that this ended peacefully. At this time, it is unclear what, if any, charges the suspect will face moving forward. Green also added that the passenger in the truck that got out, they're not looking for him at this time. Again, all of this information is preliminary and subject to change. And, of course, all of it under investigation. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jaffney. New on the night beat, if you noticed plumes of heavy black smoke on the northeast side today, it's because 16 large big rig trailers caught fire. Those trailers were parked near the Ben E. Keith Foods warehouse in Selma. That's right off of I-35. First responders say those trailers were empty and no one was around at the time since the warehouse had already closed for the day. It's still unclear what started the fire, but right now investigators do not suspect arson. San Antonio police have arrested the boyfriend of a woman who was found dead in her home earlier this week. The suspect identified as 29 year old Jorge Izquierdo. He has been charged with murder. Police say the victim, Cora Nickel, was shot and killed Thursday in her northwest side home in the 8900 block of Maverick Draw. Police say it was Nickel's eight year old child who found her. She had been shot in the head. We're told Nickel lived in that home with her children who are ages eight and five. The children have since been removed from the home and are now placed with family members. San Antonio police looking into an overnight shooting on the east side where four men reportedly came under fire. It happened near the Highland Apartments on Rigsby Avenue. Police say the men were walking to the intersection of Clark and Hammond when someone fired those shots. The men made it to the apartment complex only to discover one of them had been shot in the leg. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. No arrests have yet been reported. Police arresting a couple overnight following a fight on a tornado tour bus this morning. The incident happened around 3 a.m. near I-35 and Zarzamora Street. San Antonio police say that fight between the couple was so intense, other bus riders were being tossed around. The man has been charged with assault, possession of drugs, and later discovered to have an active warrant for his arrest. The woman was also arrested on an active warrant. No one on the bus was hurt. News around Texas now. The search continues for the latest missing soldier from Fort Hood. It's been one week since Elder Fernandez was last seen at the military base. In a statement, the 1st Cavalry Division's public affairs officer revealed Elder was sexually abused while on post. 
The Army said he was moved to a different unit within his brigade and his claims were already being investigated. After meeting with officials on post yesterday afternoon, his mother, Alina Fernandez, says she's frustrated with the way the Army is dealing with her son's disappearance. I feel like since I, I landed here Wednesday that they have enough time to do more and, and give me some answers by now. The Army says right now it does not suspect foul play, but Fernandez says the situation reminds her too much of the circumstances surrounding the disappearance of Vanessa Guillen. In Corpus Christi today, the bodies of two missing crew members of a dredging boat were found following yesterday's port explosion. According to the Coast Guard, the explosion happened around 8 a.m. yesterday when the vessel struck a submerged pipeline. The fire on board the vessel was first extinguished yesterday afternoon, but then sparked up again and was finally put out around 10 o'clock last night, right before the ship, which was carrying about 6,000 gallons of diesel fuel, broke apart and sank. Two crew members are still missing tonight. His life cut short, but his name lives on. Today, fundraiser was held in honor of 20-year-old Noah Calderon, the youngest sheriff's deputy to ever serve Bear County. Yeah, Calderon and his fiance were killed in a crash near Corpus Christi last week. Their deaths prompting an overwhelming response from the community. The night team Stephen Cavazos was there today as people came to honor the young man. What an honor to have a son that's done so much in his life in the 20 years that he was here. So Edward Calderon remains in awe of his son Noah. Noah and his fiance Samantha Grace Handy were killed in a crash last week. The only survivor of that crash, Noah's younger brother Luke, who is for now paralyzed from the waist down. Edward is optimistic Luke will recover before his older brother is laid to rest. We're on our way to recovery, so that's what we're hoping that he's going to regain all the feeling in his legs. Today, a barbecue fundraiser was held at the RJ Pavilion off Pleasanton Road to raise money for Noah's funeral. The majority of people showing up in support didn't know the young deputy, but admired his ambition to serve the community. Um, I never met him, but you know, just stuff that I read and heard about him, he's accomplished, he accomplished so much. When Chris Quintero learned of Noah's death, he reached out to his family, hoping to ease their burden. All right, we gotta figure out how to do something to help, help him out because, you know, um, they should have, no, no family's not going to get through it alone. Close to 40 deputies with the Bear County Sheriff's Office, including other law enforcement agencies, came to lend their time, rallied together in support of one of their own. The amount of support in this one week that is just absolutely amazing. Close to 1,200 plates were sold within hours. Edward only met Quintero today, but says they're forever bonded. He put this together for my son. I'm very grateful. Uh, don't know him, but I love him for what he did. And he says Noah's impact in the community will never be forgotten. He's still out there and they're, they're, everybody's remembering him. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, 78 degrees. It really does not feel too bad out there. And considering it is late August, today could have been much hotter. But we only topped out at 90 at the airport in San Antonio today because of those morning showers and storms that moved on through that dropped a little bit more than a quarter inch of rain at the airport. A few folks got a little bit more than that, and we'll take a look at some rain, rainfall totals coming up. Unfortunately, no rain on radar tonight. We don't have any more of those thunder showers moving through tonight or tomorrow morning, so it will be a touch hotter as we finish out the weekend on Sunday. We'll talk about your Sunday fun day forecast and, of course, get you up to date on what's going on in the tropics. Still a lot going on out there. I'll have details coming up in just a few minutes. Still ahead on the night beat in a rare Saturday session, the House passes legislation in an effort to shore up the U.S. Postal Service and operations. The president tweeting his reaction. Plus the latest on several wildfires burning out of control in California. See the moment a helicopter rescued two firefighters from fast moving flames. Plus, President Trump this morning making accusations without any evidence, alleging the FDA is purposely delaying vaccine testing until after the presidential election. More on that story next. The number of COVID-19 deaths continues to rise in 25 states, Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico. And as those numbers rise, drug companies are working on potential vaccines and treatments. But the president, without any evidence, is now making an accusation against the Food and Drug Administration. Here's ABC's Zoreen Shaw with the details. 
More than 175,000 Americans have lost their lives to coronavirus. The CDC saying the death toll in the U.S. could reach 200,000 over the next three weeks. Drug companies are working on potential vaccines, with many already being tested in human trials. But President Trump lashing out Saturday morning on Twitter, offering no evidence, accusing the, quote, deep state or whoever over at the FDA of making it very difficult for drug companies to get people in order to test vaccines and therapeutics. Obviously, they're hoping to delay the answer until after November 3rd. We have reached out to the FDA but have not heard back. Meanwhile, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi calling his accusation dangerous. Even for him, it went beyond the pale in terms of how he would jeopardize the health and well-being of the American people and accuse the FDA of politics. The head of the CDC says it will take cooperation from entire communities to keep kids safe in school as the president pushes for schools to reopen everywhere. More than 200 students in Mississippi testing positive. Thousands more are in quarantine. One elementary school closing one week into in-person classes. Crowds at this high school football game in Alabama have the principal discussing changes for future games. If there's an outbreak, there won't be high school football. I'm worried about my boys and my cheerleaders, my bands having a full season. College campuses in at least 36 states seeing rises in cases. Notre Dame logging more than 330 cases. An op-ed in the student newspaper with the headline, Don't Make Us Write Obituaries. It's up to all of us to work together so we don't end up hurt. After these images of crowded parties at Ohio State University, officials tell ABC News students who host or attend a party or any gathering with more than 10 people will face an interim suspension. At UNC Chapel Hill, classes are canceled this coming Monday and Tuesday, giving students time to move off campus and switch to remote learning. Zorin Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Meanwhile, a couple of tropical systems are barreling towards the Gulf with Tropical Storm Marco showing the best odds of hitting Texas right now. In preparation, Padre Island National Seashore will close at 8 tomorrow morning out of precaution. The access road to North Beach area will stay open until tomorrow afternoon. We will keep you updated on any other closures as they come in. And of course, the priority is making sure the people who get hit by that storm are safe. But yeah. if we're being a little bit selfish, we would hope that some of that rain comes towards us, Katie, but it's not looking promising. No, things have really changed yeah. today, and it shifts everything away from Texas and towards Louisiana. And Marco will not be the only tropical system that Louisiana has to worry about as we get into next week. So I know some folks were hoping for some rain, and we would love a very weak, unorganized tropical system to head our way and toss us some rain, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's in the cards next week. So we're extra thankful for the rain that we got this morning. That was generally along and east of 35. If you're off to the west and up in western portions of the hill country, you're like, what rain are you talking about? We didn't see anything today. But some folks across the viewing area saw uh, around an inch, in some cases a little bit more than an inch of rain this morning. That rain and cloud cover also helped to keep us a bit cooler today, so we're really thankful for it. Uh, as far as what that rain will do for the aquifer, some good news. This whole red area here is the aquifer recharge zone, so any rain that falls there generally will help the aquifer out. We did have some sweet spots there from Kendall County up through Comal County and uh, and uh, Hayes County there. So we will take it and we sh should see a little bump in the aquifer as we get into the day tomorrow. We'll have that for you uh, tomorrow afternoon. Satellite and radar tonight is very quiet. A few lingering clouds out there, but that's about it. There were some thunder showers up near the Concho Valley and it was actually this northerly flow that we've had in place this week. Drop down last night brought us those showers and storms earlier this morning. Unfortunately, I don't really see anything up in central and north Texas that could get to us by tomorrow. So unfortunately, I don't think we'll start off your Sunday like we did your Saturday. It'll be a rain free into the weekend, uh, but it feels pretty good out there right now. 78 at the airport, still in the low 90s out in Del Rio. Didn't get quite a school off to the west today, but those of us that did see some good cloud cover through the first part of the day, our temperatures were kind of stunted this afternoon, so we didn't get quite so hot. Not bad. Uh, and also because of that, I think we'll be able to cool down a little bit more tonight. So I'm going to put your low temperature near 70 degrees. Overall, pretty comfortable. If you can get out early tomorrow morning for a walk or a jog, I really don't think it'll feel too bad out there. But we will warm up quickly. 90 at lunchtime, 96 or high temperature tomorrow afternoon. I expect a good amount of sunshine tomorrow. Maybe a few more fair weather cumulus clouds out there during the afternoon hours. But as far as any rain goes tomorrow, it's not really in the cards unless you're down closer to the coast. 
then I think you stand a slightly better chance at seeing a little passing shower during the afternoon hours tomorrow. Otherwise, rain will be hard to come by. Something you'll start to notice, though, I think even tomorrow, especially as we get into Monday, we're going to start to see some showers down by the coast and some cloud cover being tossed in from the east. That's because the flow around Marco in the Gulf will start to be reflected in our satellite and radar. So let's jump into what's going on in the tropics. Still a lot out there. I'm going to stand right in the middle of these two systems. We've got a uh, tropical storm Laura that is still out in the Caribbean tonight. We've got tropical storm Marco a little bit closer to home now starting to work into the Gulf of Mexico. There's been a lot of talk about these two systems. If they're in the Gulf at the same time and they're both named storms at that time, that would only be the third time in recorded history that that's ever happened. But as we get into Monday, as Marco starts to approach Louisiana Gulf Coast, it looks like Laura is still going to be hanging back closer to Cuba there. So will they be in there at the same time? That's going to be a pretty close call as we get into Monday, Tuesday of next week. But this is not good news for the Louisiana and Mississippi Gulf Coast because you've got Marco coming in Monday and then Laura behind it on Wednesday, potentially as a category one hurricane. So it is going to be pretty messy for our friends off to the east over the next few days. But that shift off to the east that we've seen today in our forecast models and in the forecast track from the Hurricane Center does mean that any impacts to the Texas coast, any impacts to our forecast here in South Texas at this time look to be pretty minimal. I know that's not the news people wanted because we wanted some some good rain. We don't want all the other mess that goes along with those tropical systems, but just some isolated thunder showers possible, I think, through the middle of the week. And that'll be about it. So why is Marco going away? We're going to talk about that next half hour. Yeah, it's so interesting what's happening with those two storms. Definitely yeah. got to watch it. Great to have something to talk about. Exactly. <laughs> All right, the Spurs' Derek White was playing injured. We learned he had surgery yesterday. That was a big surprise to a lot of us. Yeah, it was a big surprise because of how fantastic he played in the bubble. It almost looked like a new player. Where was that the entire season? But coming up, we'll talk about Derek White's surgery coming off his best NBA season next in sports and a Super Bowl. The Texans' Deshaun Watson wants one, but what does he feel it will take from his team to get there? Hard to believe after producing his best season in the NBA that San Antonio Spurs guard Derek White actually underwent surgery Thursday, the team announced in a statement on Friday, which indicated the injury occurred before the NBA restart in Orlando. But White was seen limping in an August 9th matchup with the Pelicans. The surgery was performed in New York to correct the disc located second toe on his left foot. And he is expected to be ready at the start of next season. White's performance was just stellar in the bubble, averaging close to 19 points and five assists and then 11.3 points per game during the season as a whole. The Spurs were eliminated from the postseason last week for the first time in 22 years. The top seeded Los Angeles Lakers taking on the Portland Trailblazers. This series tied at one. Blazers have come to the bubble to play. Damian Lillard makes a 28 footer to push Portland ahead 18 10 in the first quarter. Second quarter, LeBron James gets the hoop and harm. He'd make the foul shot part of a 22 half effort. Lakers would be down to 57 53 at the half. Lakers pull ahead in the third. Contavious Cadwell Pope with the miss. Anthony Davis gets the board and slams it down. LA leads by eight. Lakers pull away late fourth quarter. Davis with the step back. Lakers win 116 to 108. Also in the Western Conference, the Thunder top the Rockets 119-107 in overtime. Houston still leads the series overall two games to one. Meanwhile, in the Eastern Conference, the Bucks top the Magic 121-107 to take a 2-1 series lead. And the Miami Heat knock off the Indiana Pacers 124-115 to take a, a commanding 3-0 series lead. The Cowboys' first-round draft pick, CeeDee Lamb, continues to impress just about everyone during his first training camp. The former All-American wide receiver from Oklahoma is earning high praise with running back Tony Pollard, saying, quote, he's worth the hype, end quote. And Amari Cooper even going as far as to say the Cowboys could field three 1,000-yard receivers this coming season. But right now, Lamb is just focusing on adapting to the increased pace of the NFL.
The NFL is definitely bigger, faster, stronger, and a lot of guys are smarter. So, and just coming in with the same mentality, you know what I'm saying, that I'm, gonna, I'm the new kid on the block, so I'm respecting everybody. Uh, just, just, just playing my role, and uh, whenever my opportunity or my name's called, just make most of it. Also, a bit of cap space news. The Dallas Cowboys have cleared $6.75 million of cap space through Tyron Smith's contract by just converting just south of $9 million into a signing bonus to be determined how that extra space will be used. But, of course, the Cowboys have yet to strike a long-term deal with quarterback Dak Prescott. Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson enters his fourth season with the Texans with a 24-13 regular season record and a 1-2 postseason record. Now Watson is used to winning at every level from his state championship in Georgia to his NCAA title at Clemson and now winning a Super Bowl has become his top priority. Watson says small steps can make a big difference in the team's pursuit of the Lombardi Trophy beginning with the mental mistakes. Be more detailed and, and just trim down the MEs uh, and, uh, and the mental errors. And if we can can do that, can do that and of course stay healthy, um, that's a big key. I feel like we can have the opportunity. Um, in that last game against the Chiefs, you know, we started off uh, right and continue, but once we hit that wall and they got the momentum, we got to continue to flip that momentum and learn how to do that. The Texans kick off the NFL season in less than three weeks at Kansas City, who eliminated the Texans last season in the AFC Divisional Round. Just a couple practices in, what does Texas A&M head football coach Jimbo Fisher think of his team that's coming up later in sports? And the Night Beat will be back after the break. We have some late breaking news to tell you about happening down in Pleasant and a very active police scene there. Yeah, the night team Stephen Cavazos just got there a few minutes ago. Stephen, can you tell us what you're seeing out there? Tim Courtney, we are here at the intersection of Oak Haven and Oak Lawn. And just take a look behind me. We have a pretty active scene. In fact, we're told that we cannot go further than this line, but there are multiple units out here. We've seen the Texas game warden as well as multiple SWAT members out here on the scene. Now, it's not clear why they are exactly out in this location, but what I can tell you from what I see over here, it does appear that this is a residential area and there is a small group congregating in that spot over there. Again, we are still working on gathering some details right now. This is as as far as we can get to the scene, but we are told that the Pleasanton Police Chief is planning to be out here to provide more details. Of course, you can stay with KSAT as we continue to bring you the very latest on this breaking scene. Tim Courtney. Thank you, Stephen. After the House voted to pass a bill to fund the United States Postal Service, President Trump taking to Twitter saying the bill is a, quote, hoax by Democrats to give $25 billion in unneeded money for the political purposes and called on the Senate to not advance that bill. It's a turnaround from August 13th when the president said the post office needed the money to handle the influx of mail-in ballots. Here's ABC's Karina Mitchell with those details. In a rare Saturday session, the House voting to approve legislation allocating $25 billion to the U.S. Postal Service. The bill prioritizes all official election mail as first class and prohibits the removal of sorting machines and mailboxes, which some say have contributed to delays in mail delivery. Don't mess with USPS. The vote largely along party lines with Democrats supporting the bill, but more than two dozen Republicans joined Democrats defying House GOP leaders and President Trump, who reacted to the vote on Twitter, writing, this is all another hoax by the Democrats to give 25 billion unneeded dollars for political purposes. Don't pay any attention to what the president is saying, because it is all designed to suppress the vote. On Friday, the president continued pushing unfounded claims, suggesting mail-in voting would undermine election results. You're not going to be able to know the end of this election, in my opinion, for weeks, months, maybe never. But House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer said voting by mail will allow Americans to vote safely during the pandemic. Voting mail is super first-class mail. It is our democracy. 
that is whether or not we're going to move in one direction or the other direction so that the voices of the people are heard. 44 states plus Washington, D.C. are now allowing any voter who wants to vote by mail to do so. Only registered voters will have their votes counted. Once you've voted, your name will be crossed off and you will not be able to vote again. Today's vote coming just 24 hours after the Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy, a Trump appointee, assured senators that ballots will be delivered on time. This sacred duty is my number one priority between now and Election Day. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell had previously said the Senate would not take up a standalone postal bill, tonight accusing Democrats of, quote, ignoring the urgent needs of the American people. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. A California court has ordered President Trump to pay porn actress Stormy Daniels legal fees. The judge ordered the president to pay more than $44,000 to Stephanie Clifford, whose stage name is Stormy Daniels. The amount is to reimburse her legal fees surrounding her non-disclosure agreement. The judge ruled Clifford was entitled to the legal fees, finding her the prevailing party under California law, even though the case was dismissed. Clifford says she had an affair with Trump from 2006 to 2007. She signed a $130,000 non-disclosure agreement with former Trump attorney Michael Cohen. The president denies the affair ever occurred. Portland police are officially calling a demonstration outside of a police precinct this morning a riot. Demonstrators had spent hours protesting in front of the department's north precinct. Officers used some kind of loudspeaker or megaphone to warn them to obey the law, but some demonstrators ignored that advice and started moving toward the building and throwing objects at police. This is the scene that followed as officers dispersed the crowd with white smoke and flash canisters. Police say there were numerous arrests, but it's unclear how many. Two California firefighters are safe after crews rescued them from a fast-moving fire. Take a look. The pair of Marin County firefighters were stranded in heavy brush last night. The Sonoma County Sheriff's Office had to use a helicopter with a 100-foot-long line to pull both firefighters to safety at the same time. Fire officials say the operation was complicated because of strong gusting winds in the area. The Woodward fire has been burning out of control since Tuesday. It was sparked by a lightning strike and has burned now more than 2,200 acres. Meanwhile, a coffee company owned by first responders is helping victims of one of those raging California fires. Some residents of Vacaville, southwest of Sacramento, lost absolutely everything. Many only had moments to evacuate as flames approached in the middle of the night, only grabbing what they could. Those who lost their homes are starting from scratch, and Huerto Coffee is helping bring the donations they need the most. We lost everything, and you know, even more importantly, my mom and dad lost everything. That's devastating, and I don't think that you think things are going to happen like happen to you like that until it actually does. With this tragedy coming up and almost burning my family's home, and actually taking some of my best friends' families' homes and burning them to the ground, we're just trying to do what we can by stepping up and making a difference for all the families that are affected by this fire. More than 77,000 people in San Mateo and Santa Cruz counties have been told to evacuate because of the CZU Lightning Complex fire. That fire has burned nearly 300,000 acres as of this afternoon with only 10% containment. Still ahead, in an effort to be more inclusive, a local wedding planner is calling for change in her own industry. Her story and a closer look at her business next. Love is available to you no matter what you look like or who you want to spend your life with. That's the message one local wedding planner has been sending since starting her own business just a few short years ago. For her, the big day isn't just about the vows or the cake, but preparing couples for all the days they'll spend together. Her business, just one of many we're highlighting during National Black-Owned Business Month. When I started my business, I knew that I wanted it to be different than, you know, the cookie cutter wedding planning service. I will love and cherish you all the days of my life. It's a simple line derived from wedding vows, and it's where all the days creator and owner Jordan Maney found the name for her business. I just love that um, because I really want my couples to be able to celebrate this big day, but to really focus on all the days that they have ahead of them. 
In an effort to build something different, Mamie made it her mission to not only plan weddings, but focus on the health and development of her clients' relationships, offering counseling and prompting important conversations. I started to get a lot of couples who were like, always talking to such and such business, and they said, you know, they don't work uh, with my kind of couple. Which is why Mamie decided to market her business with an emphasis on inclusivity, where everyone can feel safe and supported. You have couples that come to you that say like, you know, I had an identity crisis trying to play my wedding because I didn't see my skin color, hair texture. I didn't see my partner. Um, I didn't see myself. Mamie's dedication to the well-being of her couples never falters during hard times. Amid the coronavirus pandemic, she's challenging herself to get creative. We're starting to figure out like different programming that I can offer online and virtually to help couples not just um, get through this pandemic, but really create a foundation for the rest of their lives. The pandemic, though, not the only curveball thrown her way in the year 2020. Of course, with the murder of George Floyd, it became a conversation of there's so much anti-racism and inclusion education that has to happen in this industry that is not. We need to be having more conversations about, you know, why we don't see as many black couples, especially black queer couples in wedding media. These issues prompting an emotional plea on social media, asking the wedding industry and its businesses to step up and take an anti-racism pledge. It's going to be messy and uncomfortable and difficult, but it's necessary. Let's get it done. And while the road ahead may be long, Maney says there's always one constant. No matter who you are, uh, where you come from, how you love, who you love, love is available to you. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Important work she's doing there. If you or somebody knows planning a wedding, we've linked all of Jordan's information with this story on KSAT.com. Outside with live cam, we've dropped down to 77 degrees. Fairly comfortable out there, clear skies over downtown San Antonio. Overall, pretty nice day today. Our high temperature just 90 degrees because of the cloud cover and rain we had around this morning. So overnight skies will be mostly clear. We'll see temperatures for most of us fall into the low 70s, maybe even a few spots sneaking into the upper 60s there in the hill country. Tomorrow afternoon, though, will be a good bit hotter than it was today. We're looking at a high temperature mid to upper 90s tomorrow afternoon, low 90s in the hill country with mostly sunny skies, maybe a couple of coastal showers, but that'll be about it as far as the rain is concerned. So I told you we were going to dig into why Marco now is shifting east and away from the Texas coast. I'll have that for you coming up next.